Hey everybody, Scott Weichel. You're listening to My Kind of Country right here on MKOCRadio.com. One of the greatest songwriters of our time has got a new movie coming out, and uh, I'm excited to see it, and I'm excited for my listeners to see it as well. He is one of the most prolific songwriters to ever come down the way, and uh, with songs from George Strait, Brooks and Dunn, the list just goes on and on. And the new movie is called Tennessee Whiskey, the Dean Dillon Story, and I'm very happy to have Dean Dillon with me today, as well as the director, Cole Clausen. How are you guys doing today? Man, I'm great. I'm ready to rock this world with a movie. Fabulous. <laughs> Doing great, Scott. Thank you. Well, Cole, I'd like to uh, ask you, uh, first of all, um, how did the uh, whole concept come together for putting this uh, movie out? Yeah, I, it, that's the first question everyone asks, is how, how did this thing even happen? And uh, I, I was at a... a Moved up to Crest, New Colorado, not too a few years back, after being away a few years, and I got invited to a party up on the top of the mountain, in the middle of winter, uh, during this music festival that I didn't know anything about, that uh, was put on by a guy named Dean Dillon, and a friend said, "Oh, you gotta meet this guy. He's just such a neat character." He, oh, by the way, he wrote all of George Strait's hits, and I said, and they said it in passing, in such a way that that was like. Uh, you know, a secondary, you know, a bit of information. So I was blown away. I grew up listening to George and have, you know, all my family's in Texas. So the opportunity to meet the guy that, that wrote these songs was, was a big deal to me. And, and I got a chance to meet Dean and was introduced. And and uh, I don't know, a few, a few minutes went by and <laughs> as a filmmaker, I just listening to him and, and looking at him and hearing his whole story and, you just got such a presence. I said, man, how has no one made a film about you yet? And, and he said, he kind of shrugged his shoulders like he wasn't interested in that kind of thing. And I said, well, you know, what do you think we we, we try to do that? And he said, we we talked it out. And long story short, he said, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so the rest is kind of history. Well, that's fabulous. And the movie is out and available now. Is that correct? It is. It came out. It comes out two days. Nineteenth. Uh, it's on iTunes, Amazon, Google. It'll be out on DVD here in a, in a probably uh, well within the next month. Um, they're working on that, but it's, everything's kind of happening as we speak. We had a a great post on Facebook this morning from uh, George Strait himself, so that was a really nice plug. Um, and we're just really proud of it. You know, this has been a huge honor for me, and I want to let Dean speak to it, but um, from the filmmaker's point of view, that's really uh, just, we're just at an exciting time getting this story out there. People are freaking out all over social media, so it's pretty exciting. That's great. <clears throat> we're happy to get that information out to our listeners, too. And DeanDillon.com is the place to go to uh, learn more about the movie and, of course, uh, learn more about Dean as well. Dean, um, I just, you know, it's a staggering catalog of music that you have. And uh, the nice thing about this movie is that it's applauding someone who has written all these wonderful songs. And to me, country music stars are vessels just performing these songs and uh, for somebody like you to write them is what gives country music its meaning it's what gives it its longevity and uh, how after looking back on all these wonderful songs you've done as you sit right now looking back to when you were you know seven years old writing your first songs did you ever think that uh, you'd have this many hit songs and did you ever envision a movie about yourself no no uh you know, I I never got really serious about music till you know twelve, thirteen. But at that point, uh, the bug bit me, and and you know I hear Chuck to Nashville when I was eighteen, and uh, you know you can't dream stuff, you know that big. I I guess is the best way I know how to put it. I mean, just the relationship with with George and with with Kenny Chesney, which, by the way, I just uh, got on Ches KennyChesney.com and donated to his relief fund for the islands down there that got blown away by Irma and now Marie. And I just want to say that those islands have been the, the backdrop, <coughs> excuse me, the backdrop of a lot 
large portion of my life, and, and a lot of my songs were written in the islands in St. John and Hills Van Dyke and, and uh, Florida Keys. But uh, I'd urge everyone to go to KennyChesney.com and donate to that relief effort down there. Because those people are just, it's devastation. And uh, I did want to say something about that. And, and back to the movie, you know, when Cole first approached me, I'd had people talk to me about doing something like that. And I never really took it seriously. And uh, when he approached me, it was like, oh, no, here we go again. And, and then the more I talked, Oops, did we lose you? As a filmmaker, and uh, first of all, as a person, and then as a filmmaker, and and, and uh, he explained to me that we could really do this. And uh, when that set in, that we could really pull this off, and uh, I turned, basically turned the range over to him, and, and uh, man, he put a great movie together, a great film. And and uh, I think it's important in the sense that people get to see uh, what it's like for not just myself, but a lot of the songwriters in Nashville, everywhere, uh, what it takes to do that for a living. You know, it's not uh, for the faint of heart by any means. You know, and to say that you're going to sit down one day and write the song that's going to go to number one, and then, you know, you're going to be rewarded for your efforts, and then that, for that to happen time and time and time again, and, and to be able to form the relationships you form over the years with people like Kenny and, and George and, and Toby Keith and, and Womack and Brooks and Dunn and Robert O. I mean, it's... It's a, it's been a phenomenal life, and there was a time in my life where that I would have said no, and uh, but I think the time's right for it. I think the time's right to reflect and look back and and uh, see just how much time and effort you know was put into to. Uh, to writing those songs and where they came from and where I got the ideas for them and who I wrote them with and the impact they had on people's lives and and uh, uh, <clears throat> sometimes the hell you got to go through to get a great song, you know? There's, yeah. there's more than meets the eye, so to speak. And then Cole's production is, you know, first rate. We use great cameras and, and uh, this was not a you know, let's just go take an iPhone and shoot this thing. This was the real deal, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm extremely proud of it and extremely proud of Cole for uh, stepping up to the plate and doing the job he did. Well, that's wonderful. The film is called Tennessee Whiskey, the Dean Dillon story. And Cole, as you were, I'm sure this must have been a monumental task, uh, you know, just scheduling-wise, trying to get around to be able to talk to all these people and put this film together. Yeah, it was. It was the biggest. It was the biggest hurdle. Um, you know, knowing the relationships Dean had and how personal they they are, uh, and knowing you know being in the film business and working with celebrities and they're very they're very uh, fragile relationships and and you, you can't exploit them and you can't take advantage of these and they're, and not only that but they're so busy and. Get you know when I first met with Dean, we kind of sat down and just kind of discussed how this would work out. The last thing I wanted to do was, uh, you know, use to have to use Dean to get to them, and and it's hard to get to 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 these. I mean, George Strait's the biggest name, and he, he's the Elvis to Texas to country music, and to get to to him and to say, hey, can you give us a you know a couple hours to shoot an interview? Um, it was really important to me to not not make Dean make those phone calls. So it that made my job a little harder, but at the same time, uh, one of the coolest things was when, when you drop Dean Dillon's name on the phone to a manager or an agent or a publicist, 
they answer you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a that was a great a great thing. And I just felt like you know what these guys they're going to do it. <clears throat> and we we kind of went out of the gate. I'm like, Dean, let me just let me just do what I do and try to make it happen. And sure enough. <clears throat> the first interview was a year ago in August with with George Strait, and his people got back and said, gave me an address and said, meet George at his place in San Antonio. And sure enough, I pulled up at the gate, and big old black Ford F-250 Lariat pulled up, and George Strait was sitting in the driver's seat. So uh, it was pretty. It was a pretty bizarre experience shooting all this. Same with Kenny and Toby, and went to Vegas and met Toby at a show at the MGM and uh, Kenny in Nashville and uh, Kicks in Nashville and it was it was just really great and, and you know I just wanted to comment on movies every film that comes out and at least when the DVDs were, were hot the behind the scenes stuff was always the best part of a DVD when people would buy a movie they'd love watching the behind the scenes stuff and, yeah. and I, I look at I look at documentaries like this as they're the behind the scenes pieces. They're the, you know, everyone's, everyone's listened to the, everyone who's listened to country music knows the lyrics to the chair inside and out, and they've heard the song a thousand times. And they might have gotten married to it or had their first dance or whatever. But the, the opportunity to hear the behind the scenes of how did that song come into existence, that's what motivated me. And, and then knowing kind of Dean's just, legacy in his repertoire and, and his uh, 40 years of doing this but really behind the scenes almost the whole time um, was fascinating to me so I just think that it's important to you know Dean mentioned that that uh, he, he wasn't really that this was not important for him to tell his story he did, if you ever talk to anyone who's met Dean he's the most humble guy you've ever met and it wasn't a big deal to him. He's like, it's not about me, but I just, as a third party, that felt, no, no, you, your story does need to be told. It's told. It's part of a, it's an era in history, and, and it's a, you know, the day you go, the day George goes, it, it gets forgotten forever unless we immortalize it and tell it. And, and I think that was my goal. So that's wonderful. Um, well, I applaud and, you for that, Cole. Yeah, <clears throat> I applaud you for the work that you've done here because uh, I'm I'm very interested in country music history and as you mentioned you know these behind the scenes things are of great interest to me and I know a lot of people all around the world and I really thank you for what you've put together here I think it's a wonderful you know documentary a wonderful piece of history and uh, you know Dean it's amazing that, you know just the body of work that you've had on I mean there's there's songs that. Uh, you know, I can remember where I was I, for the first time that I heard him. You know, like you, you mentioned, the chair, Cole, and you know, my gosh, uh, sixty-three songs for George Strait. You know, I've come to expect it from you. Easy come, easy go. Uh, she let herself go. You know, best day, Marina Del Rey. I mean, the list goes on. Um, one of my very favorite songs of all times, Vern Gosden, "Is It Raining at Your House?" That is absolutely a stellar song. And Dean, I'd like to ask you. You know, I'm, I wouldn't ask you, you know, if you have favorite songs or anything like that. That's, you know, that's an impossible question to ask. But are there any songs that an artist recorded of yours that changed your perspective on the song itself as to how you had written it? That, that probably would be a lot of things different that I wrote with uh, Bill Anderson. Um that song has so much, it says so much about, you know, if you had a chance to do it over again, first, would you? And then secondly, you know, would you do it the same way you did it or would you change things about it? You know, and, and so many people say, oh, I'd, you know, I'd never change a thing about the way it was. And, and just the message in that song is, well, this guy sure would. You know, there were mistakes made and and, uh, and forgetfulness and 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 just all those types of things that that uh, the singer sings about. And, and after writing that song, it 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 uh, I felt like 
when Bill and I finished that song, I remember calling uh, Mike Whalen, my song guy, who was my song putter, who I turned my songs into, and I could not wait to speed dial that guy <laughs> and say, man, you got to hear this, because I knew it was something that was important, and I knew it was something that would that nobody had said before, really, and and uh, that people would want to hear. And so that's that's that song. Well, that's two of the heaviest hitters in the business right there with songwriting is Dean Dillon and Bill Anderson. My gosh, uh, you can't go wrong with a song from you guys, I think. <laughs> um, <clears throat> one of the songs I wanted to ask you about is called Leave Them Boys Alone, and it was recorded by Waylon Jennings and Hank Jr., and Ernest Tubb made a, made a, a cameo appearance in this song, and it was his last recording before he passed away. Um, it was. Tell me a little bit about that song. I've always been curious to hear the story behind this one. Well, the story behind that was I had, every time Hank Williams drew a breath, Hank Williams Jr. drew a breath, the press was on it. It didn't matter what he did, you know. There was always someone lurking with a with a camera and just exposing him in you know, a not a very good light. And Bo Cephas is a good friend of mine. And in those days, I felt like a lot of that was unjustifiable. And uh, and I got pissed off, man. And so uh, I sat down in a room. I think Frank Dykus and Tanya were, and I were in a room one day, and I told them about this idea, and, and uh, we wrote the song. And then uh, Waylon, and as you said, on his tub, and Hank sang on it. And uh, for a guy like me, you know, in those in those days, those were, those were probably the three biggest heavy hitters in in country music, and uh, to uh, to capture those three on one record is like you know hitting a grand slam. Yeah. So I thought it turned out. I thought their version turned out great, but yeah, it was. I was mad about it. I just I got tired of the Prestis fashion, Hank. Because he, he's, it's, it wasn't deserved. Absolutely. Well, that's a great song. It's uh, one of my very favorite ones. And uh, Tennessee Whiskey has had, you know, it's had several lives to it. It's had, you know, David Allen Coe, it's had George Jones, it's had Chris Stapleton. Um to me, the definitive version is, is always going to be George Jones, and uh, it's it's too bad that George wasn't here to uh, be able to be a part of this this movie. Um, but tell me tell me about Tennessee Whiskey and Cole. I'd also like to ask you how uh, how you came up with this to be the title for the documentary. Well, the song uh, was born. I'd had that idea for a while. And then uh, I had an opportunity to go to the Bluebird Cafe one night and hear a young lady sing, a singer-songwriter by the name of Linda Hartrose. And she'd had a couple of good records on Olivia Newton-John, who was real hot at the time in the country world. And uh, I introduced myself to after her set, and uh, we talked about the idea I told her about the idea, and uh, we wound up going home together and writing that song at 4 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And then uh, I actually pitched that song to George Strait first, and he turned it down. And we laugh about it now. But, you know, in, in retrospect, the song found... Uh, it found its home in the right hands with George Strait, or with George Jones. And then um, when that song was released, it's kind of funny. We got stuck at, you know, the song races up the charts and, go, and, and is sitting at two in Billboard for like six weeks. We're sitting at two behind a song called, If I Said You Had a Beautiful Body, Would You Hold It Against Me? <laughs> Well, I knew Howard and David, 
And I'm calling them every week, going, please, <laughs> just lay off this song one week. <laughs> one record out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, after about six weeks, I think this, the song Nosedive, you know, dropped to three, and, and we jumped into one for like a week. <laughs> And then I walk down, I'm walking down the alley one day, and Billy Sherrill, who produced that record, he goes, Dylan, walked out of the studio, goes, Dylan, come here a minute. And I go over, and he goes, man, if you could have wrote that song a little bit better, we could have had a number one <laughs> a lot quicker. <laughs> and I said, you know what, Billy, if you could produce worth a hoot. And here I am telling a guy who's, you know, produced Conway, Loretta, Tammy, George, everybody and her brother. You know, asking him if he could produce just a little bit better. We had it was a it was it was a fun moment for both of us. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cole, tell me how this uh, song became the title. It had to be a hard decision. It, well, it's funny. You'd think it would have been. Now that it's the title, it just seems so natural to me. Like it was always going to be the title, yeah. but. It wasn't. And yeah. me, me and you remember, we talked We talked a bunch. I mean, we had, I threw out Easy Come, Easy Go. Uh, I, I did think it should be a song title because I just felt like all of Dean's songs have a, you know, they say so much in so few words, and that's what everyone says about Dean and his writing. So I thought, well, shoot, we got to use a title from a song as the title of the film, Why Recreate the Wheel, you know? And, uh, and, and there was a, you know, we talked out a few, and then all of a sudden it was, you know, we, I don't know how we ended up on Tennessee Whiskey, but I think it was the fact that uh, Stapleton had just played it with with uh, Timberlake at the CMAs in two, 2015, and, and it had become just this viral, you know, just huge success on iTunes, et cetera. And so we said, well, shoot, man, we got to – that's that's the name of the movie. Because we found out you know, you used that clip. Go ahead, Dean. Yeah, just that, and the more I thought about it, using the title Tennessee Whiskey, this movie, and in a songwriter's world, it's like a bottle of whiskey, that world is. In small doses, it can be one of the most thrilling and rewarding things in the world, but overdone, it can kill you. And that's the way the world of, of writing is. You know, if you take it in small doses and approach it with caution, you know, you'll have longevity. But if you burn it up and uh, pour it all out in one sitting, so to speak, you'll burn yourself down. And, you know, I've watched a lot of my friends I've lost some great friends that way. Keith Whitley, Gary Stewart. Uh, and it just became, the more I thought about that in the title, Tennessee Whiskey, and sure, Stapleton played a role in that uh, re-releasing that song, but it just became, to me, it made the most sense of anything that Cole had come up with. That's cool. Title it that. That's and, really cool. And I think one, one last thing, one last thought on it. If you listen to country music ever, even like, you know, today's country music, um, every song is talking about whiskey. It, they're trying to squeeze the word in whiskey in every single song nowadays. And I think, I think personally that's a huge shout out to Dean's song because I think that everyone's trying so hard to write the next Tennessee whiskey. And the truth is they never will. And as good as those songs might be, become uh it's just a nice uh uh re bit of reference for uh the, the original you know tennis question. you're absolutely right you're absolutely right well dean you've had some great records of your own of course you had uh, you, you touched on gary stewart so you guys had a, a great album together uh, the brotherly love song was fantastic um Mm -hmm. You had some great songs on RCA. Um, <clears throat> your 1991 album, Out of Your Mind, is uh, still one of my very favorite albums from start to finish. And, uh, you know, I, I want to give a nod to your, uh, the other side of the coin. You know, you are you are a wonderful singer and performer as well as a songwriter, so I want to give you kudos for that, too. Well, thank you. You know, after the success,
success I started having with George, though, initially I came to Nashville to do both. And uh, as time went on, it became more apparent to me that my love was the writing. And the day he asked me for Easy Come, Easy Go, which was supposed to be my next single off my new album, uh, was the turning point when I, when I made a final decision to just walk away from the art, the artist side of it and, and strictly focus on writing songs. And, uh, I can honestly tell you, I've had no regrets from that. I've uh, got, I've been so blessed to have been able to do what I've done with something that I live, eat, sleep, and breathe, and that's right songs. Amen. Amen. Well, the 2002 Songwriters Hall of Fame member, Dean Dillon, you can visit DeanDillon.com and uh, pick up Dean's music and learn more about this fabulous documentary, Tennessee Whiskey, The Dean Dillon Story. And you can go to Amazon, iTunes, pick this up, and uh, you're going to really enjoy it. And I think you're going to learn a lot uh, about uh, the inside scoop of uh, being a songwriter in country music. And uh, Cole Clausen, I want to thank you so much again for what you put together here. Thank you for taking time to be on the show. Dean Dillon, it's an honor to be able to talk talk to you and thank you so much for the wonderful music you've given us all hey man thank you for doing what you do without you guys out there playing and spinning those things you know they don't get heard and i appreciate that and i know all my guys do too Oh, it's my honor, and my show would be a lot shorter if I didn't have your great songs to play. <laughs> and speaking of that, we are going to take the rest of this hour, and we're going to play a whole bunch of songs that were uh, either composed or co-written from Mr. Dean Dillon. And DeanDillon.com, again, Tennessee Whiskey, the Dean Dillon story. Check it out, folks. Cole and Dean, thank you so much for being on My Kind of Country. Thank you.